Hello everybody, this is JT Productions and welcome back to another preview and prediction video. Today, I'll be doing the Louisiana Raging Cajuns preview and prediction. Let's get it going. Last season, Louisiana went 13-1, 9-0 in the Sun Belt, with their only loss coming to Texas in Week 1. Not bad, they have one of the long, longest streaks, I believe, in the country, had 13 wins in a row. However, they had a lot of turnover in the offseason. Billy Napier, the head coach, went on to Florida, along with a lot of players that decided to transfer to Florida along with him, including your running back, I believe a couple of offensive linemen, and so on and so forth. So, where do you go from there? Well, you hire your co-offensive coordinator in Michael DeZormo. Is this first season as a head coach at Louisiana. The question is, how will this affect y'all? Well, you're probably not going to have a 13-win streak. I can tell you that right now. So, besides that, you have one transfer who transferred in, in James Ohanba from Michigan State at, uh, at offensive guard. So... Let's see what I think y'all are going to do this year with the roster you have, which is still pretty well rounded. You have a redshirt sophomore quarterback and Chandler Fields. I don't really – hold on. Let me fact check this. I'm not completely sure if he was your starter last year. Uh, let's see. Your starting quarterback last year was Levi Lewis, and he went to the NFL draft. So, you have a new starting quarterback in as well, along with a new head coach and everything such. He's not new to the program. However, he is, is it'll be his first season starting. You have a veteran running back, Chris Smith, Richard Jr., wide receivers, Besides, your slot guys are all juniors and seniors. Tied in, you have Richard Sr. and Johnny Lumpkin in your offensive line. While losing a lot of pieces, it still has some piece around them, especially they're probably around some belt level, and maybe the transfer will make a difference. On the defense, you still have a pretty veteran group. Besides your second corner, which is redshirt sophomore, which is still pretty veteran if you ask me. So, not a bad team overall. Lost some pieces from last year, so you're not going to be the world beater you were. So, how are you going to do? Well, week one you host Southeast Louisiana. Southeast Louisiana is not going to be a pushover. They're one of the better FCS teams when it comes to being able to beat... Power 5 teams. Right, group of 5 and Power 5. I meant to say FBS. Anyways, I think you get the win. I think that Michael DeZormo starts out with a win as the Louisiana Raging Cajuns head coach. Then you have a pretty good, difficult game against Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan, one of the better teams in the MAC. I would put them about middle of the pack to upper echelon with the max standards. And I think they come down there and get a win. Eastern Michigan, while not the world beater in the MAC, they still are a well put together team. And with a first year head coach and a first year quarterback, I think this upset is liable to happen. So, you start the season one and one before having your first road test at Rice. Rice, <laughs> we do have these memes going around that Rice is back. However, I don't think that they're going to be back per se. They could be a respectable team. However, I do, I do say that you go on the road to Houston and get a win. Two and one, then you go on the road again to your in-state rival, Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe has kind of been on the uh, regression the past couple of years. 
I think you go on the road to Monroe and get a win over the Warhawks. Then you play South Alabama. South Alabama not is going to be one of the worst teams in the Sun Belt this year. You won't have much of a problem, even with a first-year head coach and a first-year quarterback. So you go into your bye week at 4-1 and one before having a big road test with the newcomer to the Sun Belt in Marshall. <laughs> and even though you're coming off a of bye week, Marshall is a well-put-together team. <clears throat> Charles Huff has that team going pretty well over his first two years, over his first year at Marshall. And I think they sneak up on you, and you fall to 4-2. and two. Then you come back home to play Arkansas State. They were one of the worst teams in the Sun Belt last year. I think that they could do a little bit of improvement, but not to the extent of being, uh, comp- well, they can be competitive, but not beating you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it's 5-2. and two. Then you go on the road to another newcomer in the Sun Belt, Southern Miss. Southern Miss is a very respectable team. <laughs> they are another team that can... Um, I guess, coming from the Conference USA, they're another team that can uh, compete with teams that are more talented than them. They have a good head coach as well, and Will Hall, who's in his second season. I think that they get you. It's another hard road test for a first-year head coach, and I think he fails it. So it's 5-3. and three. Or you come back home to play Troy. Troy, a couple of years ago, this would be a blowout by Troy, but they've kind of fallen off over the last couple of years. They have a new first-year head coach in John Summerles. So I think you get the win there. Then you play Georgia Southern there under Clay Hilton. Clay Hilton is not qualified to be coaching a team that's going from more run-heavy to more, uh, I guess, passing is what he was at Southern Cal. I don't think Clay Hilton's going to do well in his first year. So I think you get the win here. And now you are 7-3. and three. Then you go on the road to Florida State. I think Florida State has had trouble in the past with teams that are lower in talent than them, sneaking up on them like last year at Jacksonville State. And a couple of years ago with Boise. But they should take care of business against you. You'll drop to 7-4 and four before having your last game of the year at Texas State to finish the season. And Texas State, they're not going to be what they were. So you'll finish the season 8-4. and four. Now, 8-4 and four in the division you're in is very respectable. You can, you have a chance to make the Sun Belt Championship. So, that's something to be uh, excited for. So, there you have it. I have the Louisiana Raging Cajuns going 8-4, and four, taking a step or two back from last year after winning 11 games. It's just, or 13 games, I'm sorry. It's just bringing in a new head coach, new offensive coordinator, or yeah, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, and new piece on the offensive line is going to be hard to replace. But I have faith. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and go dogs.